Jesus did not come to establish a church. He didn't come to establish a religion. Jesus didn't come to establish another gathering in the house of the Lord. Mm -mm. Jesus came to establish his kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is a government that are people who he has elected. Trained. Developed, empowered by the Holy Ghost behind the scene. In the heavenly realms, are waiting to be deployed as his ambassadors and as his representatives to earth in order to have the mastering and the authority to establish a kingdom. So the ministry of the body of Christ, or what you call church, is actually a gathering of people who are being trained to become ambassadors of Jesus Christ in order to advance, establish the kingdom of God across the nations. So the church has not become kingdom-centered. We're not kingdom-centric. We're not kingdom driven we are church driven religions driven or religious or religion driven not truly really kingdom is it when you speak of kingdom you're speaking of an age you are speaking of a system you, you you are speaking of a system or a way of living that has dominated a certain people or a certain place, or a certain language, or a certain nation, or a certain tribe. Kingdom exercises dominion. Kingdom is an establishment of dominion, not necessarily a gathering of people. It is a place or a jurisdiction where God's will prevails. It is not just an individual. It is a people. You see, a people make up a kingdom. You are a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. You are. You are. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power. For there to be the establishment of God's kingdom, there has to be the reign, mastering, monopoly, and the accurate dispensation of the power of God. Meaning that we will be able to get into the realm of the power of the human mind. To control the human mind. Oh, brother, that is demonic. demonic. How long shall we leave the devil to control, manipulate, and influence the human mind? At what point are we going to say, Satan, enough is enough? The Bible says the God of this world has blinded the minds of men. Not to accept and believe in the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we've left the mind for Satan. Listen, look at every possible place that Satan monopolizes. Every area that Satan influences ought to be our places of authority and influence and dominion. But religion has caused us to depart from these realities. And God is about to remove all the Moseses that think that they are protecting the gospel of Jesus. They will be removed. Because they are hindrance to what God wants to do. The Pharisees of this age will not succeed. Because the remnants of this age are not here to die. Oh, hallelujah. I said the remnants of this age are not here to die. So the Pharisees of this age do not have the power to touch or to kill one single remnant of these last days. You know why? Because God has lifted them above physical death. Give the Lord a shout 
a praise in the house of the Lord. So it takes the mastering of power and taking warfare into the realms of power and subduing powers, subduing serpents, subduing scorpions. You see, what are serpents? Serpents were creatures of wisdom. The, one of the finest creatures of God that yielded themselves to Satan to be used. Remember the Bible was very clear that the hand of God has formed the crooked serpent. The word crooked was misinterpreted. Actually in the Hebrew it means the wise serpent. Even Jesus affirmed the wisdom of serpent. He said be wise a serpent and harmless as a dove. Now a dove is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. And of course serpent is a symbol of wisdom. We saw how the uh, staff of Moses turned into a serpent. Remember, remember, remember the magicians of Pharaoh were not the first to turn their staffs into serpents. The servant of God was. You see that? It wasn't Pharaoh or his magicians that first initiated the idea of turning a staff into serpents. Moses did first. So, so you see, you see, serpents are in the category of powers. And Satan has subdued most of these powers and perverted these powers to use against humanity. But we have the name of Jesus to teleport back to take a warfare against powers in the realms of power. And we're going to cause them to kneel. <laughs> Woo! At the name of Jesus, every kneel shall bow. They will submit. I said they will submit. They will submit. Hallelujah. They will submit. And what happens when they submit? We enslave them. Oh, we remove the curse and the spell of the devil in their minds. We get them restored. Hallelujah. We deploy them to get the work done. I know this is too much for you right now, but relax. Relax. <laughs> uh, Satan is about to be completely disarmed. Jesus began the disarming of Satan when he went down to the pit of hell. When Jesus descended to the hell, to hell, the Bible says he disarmed principalities of his powers. He disarmed powers. He disarmed them. He, he took spoil of principalities. He took spoil of powers. He, 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 he took spoil. And then he came out and said, all power in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth is given unto me. The question is, what are the sons of God doing with power? No, no, no. Please get that your religion off your head. I don't care about your religion right now. The Bible made it very clear and Jesus said it. Not man, not your books, not your teacher. The Bible says that God says all power, all power. The question is, the hour has come for us to use the name of Jesus Christ to subdue our power and bring them to sanity. Bring them to sanity. Bring them to our advantage. It is time to enter communities and countries and begin to wrestle against the powers that control that country. Forget about the, the, the physical manifestations in that country. Just rise above it. And begin to see the realms of power and begin to subdue them and by the time you subdue them they will begin to listen to your instructions everything can be changed through instructing powers powers are the abilities that work in humans powers are the abilities that influence parliaments powers are the abilities that influence human 
thinking line. You see, there are various chambers of power that can influence the fate of humanity. Powers control everything that will ever be and that is that that is and that will ever that is currently and that will ever that was and that is and that is to come remember the first time jesus gave them authority or power he says he should what thread the word thread is to what to trample meaning to subdue all right all right that's that's important to subdue all right secondly and then he says, and over all the power. So when, when he was saying serpents and powers, he was referring to the abilities or the authorities of the devil. Right? Then he says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue, which is of course tongues are powers, shall confess the lordship of Christ. Now meaning that now, they used to be uh, uh, under some other lords. But they are going to deny their lord. And accept the lordship of another. That means powers are to be subjected. Powers are to be brought under a certain influence. Powers are to serve lords. So it is our responsibility to reclaim, to redeem powers and bring them under the lordship of Jesus. Because Jesus has legally established that principle. He has already legally gained that authority over powers. You must understand that Satan had access to powers because of the fall of man. And Jesus came in form of man and Pay the penalty required to rectify that, stu that stupidity. And today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can then, through the authority and the conquest of Christ, that was beyond physical conquests, you know, it is a conquest that's enclosed in the heavenly realms. The death of Christ in the heaven did something powerful. The conquest of Christ didn't just uh, uh, end here on earth. It actually had some maximum influence in the heavenly realms. It had some powerful influence on earth. And also it has powerful influence beneath the earth. So Jesus Christ has received authority to take power. And that's why John heard the 24 elders spoke. For thou art worthy to take dominion and power and glory <laughs> forever. And ever, thou art worthy, come on the Lamb, is worthy to take glory, to take dominion, to take power, to take honor, glory to God. The Lamb is worthy, the Lamb is worthy. So all power must confess, all tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But somebody would have to take the name of Jesus to the realms of tongue and to the realms of news. If we don't take this weapon above this physical material world, then this physical material world will continue to be under the evil manipulations, oppressions, and intimidations and harassments of this perverted, you know, destroyed and controlled powers that the devil had gained authority over. And that's why we have problems establishing God's kingdom. We struggle to establish the kingdom of God. Because we have no mastery of how to war in the realms of power. A king sits on power. A president rules on power. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm the president of South Africa. That is a procedure. I, John, can never be president of this country. You know why? By legal power of this nation, I wasn't born in this nation.
By law of this nation, I cannot be president. There are laws that bring men to power. Every nation has their laws. I, sh I say that to you, pa powers and meeting of laws. Where there is power, there is order. And where there is order, there is prosperity. In fact, where there is order, there is accountability. And where there is accountability, there is prosperity. See that? Law, order, accountability, and prosperity. Once any of these laws are disrupted, the nation sink into corruption and setback. These laws are not human laws. They are the influence of spirits. They are structures that are beyond human intellect. It will take a warfare in the reins of power for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. The current culture, systems, a ways of life of people are powered, energized, strengthened, orchestrated, sustained by powers. And the only way we can deprogram and reprogram a nation and uh, reestablish a new culture, a new kingdom, is that we would have to take a warfare with the name of Yeshua into the spiritual counterpart of every nation and uproot the current existing culture, the current existing established systems that are powered by powers, wrestle against powers, bind them, take spoil of nations from powers, and then reestablish a new system in that dimension, and then come back to earth and begin to break denominations and begin to release God's people to schools, to science, oh hallelujah, to the marketplace, to creativity, to science and technology. We send our people into the world through careers and we train them to know you are going there as an ambassador. You have the best qualification, but you're not going there for money. Yet you'll be paid, but that's not the reason. You're going there to infiltrate the system. You're going there as a sheep in the midst of wolves. You're going there as, a, as, as, as one that is wise, a serpent. So you're going there with the wisdom of the serpent. Hallelujah. You're going there as, as, as a secret agent. We, we begin to set up our schools, our, our industries, our, 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 our businesses, we own our own schools. Because you see, the, the victory that we've achieved in the realms need to find the right platforms to have expression. It is not enough to war in the realms and arrest and bind uh, powers of darkness and then establish God's kingdom in the realms. It is also important that we begin to do things that will correspond with the victories in the realms for manifestation on earth in order to establish a system and a culture that work in nations. All we know how to do as church folks is to subdue powers that have, that have manifested here. In a true one brother or true six or, or three or, or true some circumstance, oh, you're just dealing with it. No. We must reclaim power by challenging powers. Every power you confront and subdue, you claim. It is time to go to the wilderness 
and confront the devil. Confront all of his systems. Defeat his systems. Defeat his seductions. Defeat his lies and deceptions and manipulations so that you can return from the wilderness with power. Jesus laid claims and powers when he defeated the devil and confronted his deceptions. That gave him access to the fullest power of the Holy Ghost. Satan has no original power. Wake up. Satan is not the opposite of God. Stop the nonsense. Don't, 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 don't. Satan, God. Ah. Uh -uh. Satan, man. Who did Satan come against? Man. Whatever he, whatever he got, he got through the way of man, through the door of man, through the route of man, not through God. You can't tempt the Lord your God. You don't, you can't. Whatever he got, he got from the foolishness of man. So Satan is not in, in warfare with God. Satan is just angry and jealous. Covetous of man's position, man's authority, and man's asses and places that God has given to man. Remember, Satan said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of the heaven. That means he that sits above the stars of the heavens controls the earth. That is the throne room of mankind. Man is to sit above the stars of heaven and rule over the powers of the air and rule over the powers of the day and the night. Woo! Velisa Hirat! Satan wants the place of man with God. Satan wants the authority that man has. That's what he wants. And all the powers that he has ever subdued, dominated, and used we are coming to reclaim all the powers and redeem them from the corruption of the devil in the name of Jesus the hour has come for the manifestation of the age of war the era of Joshua was the era of war Ah, and this war is in the heavenly places. Satan will lose his throne by the sudden emergence of the man child. The man child will take his throne by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the man child will come from the woman. The woman is the symbol, the type, the shadow of the church. We represent the manifestation of the man child. They are waiting for something to manifest, but they don't know that it has already begun to manifest. That's the mystics of theologians. They are not different from the Pharisees. When Jesus came, they said it wasn't him. How can it be Jesus? How can he be a little child from a carpenter's son? It's not him. He cannot be the Messiah. They don't know that the book of Revelation 12 had already begun to manifest. The man child has risen. Hallelujah. He is sitting on his throne, ruling all nations in the realms with the rod of iron. 
the age of war has begun. Jesus came and conquered the war in the underworld finished it but the war in the heavenlies belonged to us it is our war it is a war to reclaim to regain powers to reestablish the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ it's time for the Eden of God to be reestablished it is time for the Eden of God to be reestablished it is our mandate to establish the Eden in fact in the New Testament, it was called kingdom of God. But in the Old Testament, before sin came, it was the Eden of God. The Tribe of Fire presents International Ministers Conference with the bondservant of Christ John. Expectations, one. The Ministry of the Latter Days. 2. How to travel through the realms of fire to obtain the scrolls of the latter move of God. 3. How to partake in the end-time ministry of glory. 4. How to position yourself as a minister of the Joshua's Age of War. 5. How to ascend and take territories over the atmosphere of your community, country and people. 6. Taking the dominion of the realms of the mind in the dream world. 7. How to possess the spirit of holiness and fire. fire! 8. Impartation with the spirit of fire. Ministry breakthrough. Fire to take over for Christ. Yeah, I'm from Macedonia. All the way from Botswana. I'm from California, United States. I'm from Pretoria, South Africa. From Australia. I'm from Durban, South Africa. From the Kingdom of Eswatini. We are from the Netherlands. From Taiwan. I'm from the United States. I'm from California. I'm from Kobe, Japan. From Angola. I am from USA. I'm coming all the way from India. Bonsoir, je m'appelle, je viens de France. I come from Luxembourg in Europe. Coming from Malawi. In South Africa. From Rotterdam in the Netherlands. We're coming from Mauritius. From uh, US. And from Sydney, Australia. Maputo, Mozambique. We are from Zimbabwe. We're so amazed, so astonished because I'm expecting something that's going to happen. We cannot wait. You need to be right here. As a minister, as a pastor, evangelist. Come. Dates, 27th through to the 29th, August 2024. Session times, day one, 6 p.m. Day two, morning session, 9 a.m. Evening session, 6 p.m. Day three, morning session, 9 a.m. Evening session, 6 p.m. Register now for seat reservations. Visit our website, www.spiritrevelationchurch.org. Venue, 284, Fortrecker Road, Maitland, Cape Town, South Africa. See you in the realms.